Hi everyone, it's Lisa. It is officially the month of June and hot weather. And that brings us to another edition of the Makers Creative Collab. So this month's theme was collect and create. I had an opportunity uh, to go to my daughter's a few weeks ago and it hit me then what I wanted my project to be. My daughter has been totally focused on taking out all of the previous landscaping that had been all around her property. And they have a few acres, so yeah, it's it was a lot. And all of the invasive plants and transforming that into a native landscaping oasis. And she's done a magnificent job over the past three to four years doing that. So I asked her if I could collect some samples of some of her plants from the yard. And she's she was kind of like a mama bear with her kids. She said, well, you can. However, you can only take some from the ones that are established and have been established for three to four years. And I said, okay, you show me what I can take. So I didn't want to make her apprehensive that I was just going to strip everything down. So... Anyway, she helped me select. So, why do I have a dragonfly on the front of this? Um, well, one, I could collect some of the things that I have been gathering for a while um, in my craft collection, but the purpose, one of the purposes, one of the three purposes of uh, native landscaping is to attract insects to your yard, um, particularly birds, bees, butterflies, even dragonflies, but basically to enhance the ecosystem. So that is why I chose to have dragonflies on my cover. So I've used a few pieces here. Um, this was a jelly print that I did using p and stencils. I had also used some of the jelly prints that P had sent to me, these really cool strips here and then Mariah had sent some really neat um, mulberry paper so I used that but to enhance the aged look of it which I you know mulberry paper to me with all the fibers through it I used some of my prism pencils to go over it and it really hit on top of all of those fibers really giving it definition and then this is actually one of the mask stencils that got a lovely patina on it. And I thought, oh, I'd kind of like him shooting off at the corner to greet this one over here. So that is the cover of this small accordion style journal. Not really journal, it's more of a pictorial. So one of the things that she allowed me to take was a bit of milkweed. And that's what this is here. Now, what I did first is I pressed everything that I got the samples in a heavy book. Then when I got home, I put these all in a micro safe, microwave safe uh, dish with some silica gel to dehydrate them. And then I could apply those down. So once I got this affixed um, on top of a piece of my echo dyed paper that I had, I wrote what it was, I wrote milkweed down here and then I used one of PM's stencils over it. This is the one with daisies um, and some impasto. Then I used my prism pencils again on the side, you know, not straight up and down, but on the side to go over it and really give some depth and dimension to that impasto. And I love the way that came out. So all of the pages are fixed with this little bit of natural trim. And then we move on to this one. This one is a piece of greenery from an Arkansas blue star. And, you know, same thing, dehydrated, affixed down on top of one of my, um, this is actually one of my Magnolia digitals that I have in my Etsy store. So I just printed that out and put that on here. Again, another one of the stencils that I had gotten from them that got this lovely patina on it. And then before I applied that, I put, uh, I think this is like one of the wavy windows patterns with a little bit of tinted um, impasto through that stencil. 
just to give it a little bit of depth and dimension. So then we open up to this page and this is another form of milkweed and it does look different, but there are so many types and species of milkweed. And this was one that I actually did uh, after I dehydrated it again, pressed it, all of that stuff. This was actually a digital that I did, or not a digital, I'm sorry, an actual echo dyed piece that I had. So this is done on heavier watercolor paper. And I loved, you know, the detail that I had gotten with whatever vegetation I used to do that echo print, I don't remember. I used one of um, their stencils again with a little bit of tinted impasto um, and then a butterfly stencil because that's what milkweed is supposed to attract is butterflies and pretty simple. So here we are on the last page of the front of this and this one is a piece of her liatris. Now the liatris was not um, blooming at this point in time so I was only able to get the greenery but I just even the greenery, the way it flows when the wind blows over it is beautiful. So again, I did that on another one of my uh, digitals, one of my prints, and I used the wavy windows again with a little bit of tinted impasto over it just to give some depth. So here, before we flip over it, I did an information card trimmed with some lovely, lovely PM digitals, or keep saying digitals, gel prints. And it's got the three reasons, which I'm not gonna read each paragraph below, but the three main reasons why people really are grasping and holding on to tight um, of the idea of native landscaping. Number one, it saves water. So it's not like a regular um, landscape that you put in that you continually have to water, water, water. It's not the same root system involved. And that goes into it a little bit here. Also, it saves time because most um, of the plants that are native, they're perennials, so they come up year after year after year. And then it also, of course, one of the other reasons is to support wildlife, to attract birds, insects that help the ecosystem, um, bees, butterflies, all of those that also help to pollinate. So that's just there, plain on the back. And then, we will flip this over. So here was a jelly print that I did. And I just, this is probably one of my new favorite stencils. Of course, I say that about almost everyone. Um, but I'm really enjoying playing with this one now. And this is the Pansy stencil that they have, which I will put the link again to their shop below in the des description box. So here is a sample that my daughter let me snatch. And this is sweet yellow clover, which gets extremely tall and it's very wispy, very elegant. Again, the way the wind blows it, it just, it's gorgeous. Um, so that's sweet yellow clover. Again, I did the same thing with the dehydrating of it in some silica gel. And again, I used the wavy windows with some impasto through that to a fix it down, but to give it a little bit more depth. And again, see how much I love that pansy stencil? <laughs> um, that was just another one that I did and I loved that. And I thought, you know what? I'm gonna use that in here. I think my daughter did just plant some pansies too. Um, let's see. And I think that's it. Yep. We're back at the beginning. So, that's my project, maybe hopefully wear, uh, raise a little bit of awareness for native landscaping. I really think this is something that my husband and I are gonna do since we're both getting older and we don't feel like watering stuff. And it, hey, if it helps the environment, I am all for it. So that is it. Please be sure to click on the links below in the description box because this is a YouTube hop and show some love to the other participants. Everyone has done some wonderful work and we even have a non-YouTube group that are doing the same type of thing as us as well. So everyone have a great rest of your weekend and I will talk to everyone very soon. Take care, bye.